Yo, what's going on, Remedy Nation, man? I'm so excited to be before you one more time for midweek service. For those who have been watching for a while now, you understand that every time I teach on a Wednesday, it's attached to the thing that I taught on Sunday. This past Sunday, I taught a message titled, You're Not finished yet. And the idea that I was trying to push to every person that was watching virtually, the idea that I was trying to push to every person who came into the sanctuary in person is this idea that the enemy fears a finisher. Haven't you noticed that every time you are in process of going after the things that God has called you to go after, he's trying to thwart or stop you in the middle of the process because he understands that your finish line is actually his deadline. What can he do to a person who's actually completed the task that God has given them? And then the crazy thing about it is that once you complete that task, it gives you some type of energy. It gives you this type of, this, this, this fervor to go after everything else that God has planned for you. The enemy's deadline is your finish line. And this is why, this is why I am constantly trying to tell people, finish something. I don't tell people to finish something all because I want it to be a motivational speaker. No, I'm telling you to finish something because if you pay attention to the life of Christ, he finished everything that he started. Matter of fact, since I'm already there, the title of today's conversation is finish what you start. Now I know, I know this may seem very uh, elementary. This may seem like a very plain title, but only if you knew that if people latched on to this idea that you need to finish what you start, there would be so much success running through your generation, running through our communities, running through every space and place that you belong to. If we knew that all we had to do was finish, the enemy just wanted to stop you from, from finishing. And if you look in the Bible and you track the life of Jesus Christ, you will see that in the end, the enemy tried to plant seeds of doubt. That in the end, the enemy tried to plant people in the life of Christ that will stop him. But as he was on the cross, the last words that he said before he took his last breath was, it is finished. And this is when I tell you, finish what you start. How about this? Let's throw some Bible on it. Here, here it is. Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. That's Joshua 1 9. And so the question that I have for you today, once you ponder on that particular scripture, right? What is the assignment that God has called you to complete? What are the things that God has willed for you to pursue? Because whatever those things are that are in your life that God has placed before you, here's what I want to tell you, that you have to go after that thing with a certain type of veracity and courage. You have to go after that thing with a certain type of fervor. You have to go after that thing as if God himself commanded you to do it. When you see this in the text, he says, have I not commanded you to do this? Have I not told you that you were going to complete this thing? One of my favorite verses in the Bible is when you see the disciples stuck on the water or a storm happens on the water. Now Jesus is underneath the boat and he's taking a nap. But before they got on the boat, Jesus said something to them. He said, let's go to the other side, which means that the other side was the finish line. Now in the middle of the process, the enemy tried to stop them from believing that they were going to be able to make it to the other side. But when Jesus came up, he silenced the storm and he said, ye of little faith, 
Faith in what? Faith in the fact that I had already commanded you from the beginning that we were going to go on the other side. Have I not commanded you? Have I not told you what we are going to do? Have he not told you that you were going to get married in some season? Then why is your faith faltering in this season? Did he not tell you that you were going to be the Moses of your generation? So why is your faith faltering? faltering in this season. And I understand that the world, it can bring a certain amount of pressure, that people can bring a certain amount of pressure. But if you look in the Bible when he says, have I not commanded you? What makes you think that I'm not going to follow through? Here it is. If you want to get elementary, I know you heard this before. If he called you to it, then he will absolutely call you through it. That God did not set anything up for you to fail. That God is like, listen, if I told you you can do it, then I already predestined for you to do it. Now what you have to go through in the process to get to the end goal. Now here it is, most of the times that's due to bad decision making. Oh, I mean, no, nobody wants to talk about that. But God says, if I called you to it, if I told you to start the business, the business will be started. If I told you to go after the relationship, then the relationship will be fruitful. If I told you to go get the job, then the job will be able to take your life to another level. If I called you to it, if I had the individual call you back for a second interview, that means that you're worth interviewing. If I had them call you back, then that means you were at the top of the list. And the only thing that can take you away from going to the next level is the doubt that you set in your own mind. If I call you to it, then good God, I'll call you through it. And then he tells, he tells Joshua, have I not commanded you? And then he says, be strong and courageous. And here's what I want to tell you for every person who knows without a shadow of a doubt what God has called you to. You're not questioning if God called you. You're not questioning what God has called you to. Sometimes you just question yourself. So I just want to serve as an encourager today. Be victorious. Be ye encouraged. Walk with courage in all things that you do. That you are God's child. That you are God's chosen one. That you're his son. You're his daughter. You are the one that he wants to push to another level because you have the faith that he can move mountains with the faith of those who's suffering in silence and those who may feel like they're not adequate or qualified. He's like, no, you are. And just give me this amount of faith and I'll move every bit of doubt out of your way. Because if I called you to it, good God, I'll call you through it. If I called you to parent, then keep on parenting, even when they're not listening the way that you want them to listen. If I called you to it, then stay married, even though it may not seem like it's going the way that you expected it. If I called you to it, then stick in there and don't give up. Once this year is over, he plans on blowing you up next year. I just believe that if you stick with him, he'll stick with you. There's actually a Bible verse that says, if you draw nigh to him or draw near to him, that he'll draw near to you. But this is something I want you to know. When you are going after what God has placed on your heart, It is very important that from that day forward, you put blinders on. No, have you ever seen a racehorse when they're racing, they have these things on the side of their face and the idea is they know that they're racing against another person or they know that they're racing against another horse. But their goal is not to look at the person on the left and the right. The goal is to stay straight ahead. 
And there are so many people, there are so many people who are watching right now. You are measuring the success of what God is doing in your life by measuring the success of those on the left and the right of you. Most of the arguments that happen in your household is not even based off of what you are going through or that you're currently going through. It is based off of what your neighbor is doing. Why can't we have that? We don't get the chance to go on that vacation. We don't get the chance to spend that money. Now, truth be told, your life is good. Your children are well. Your family's in good health. But because you don't have the blinders on, you're not steadily going forward. You're not plowing the field that is before you. Matter of fact, speaking of plowing the field, look at this verse. Jesus replied, no one, no one who puts a hand to the plow looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. So I told you, don't, don't look on the side, but then you, you absolutely can't look back. But it says that no one who puts a hand to the plow looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. Of God. Put your hand to the plow. If I could break this down the best way that I can, you have to start thinking forward. You have to start thinking what is before me. You have to start thinking, what does God have in my future that it is uh, set for me to go after? That's what you need to focus on. If you are trying to drive a car while looking in the, review, in the rear view mirror, I can guarantee you that you will get into an accident. If you're driving a car and you happen to keep your head on a swivel looking at the car next to you, I can guarantee you that you are going to get into an accident. So with all of that being said, my question is why do we think that we can move forward in life while looking out of the passenger side window? Why do we believe we can move forward in life while looking in the rear view mirror? Why do we think these things? And I'm here to debunk all the thoughts that people have told you. Stuff like you need to know what your enemies, what they're doing. You need to know what the next man is. Don't let nobody pass you up. Well, how would you ever know if anybody's on your side if you're just focused on what God is doing in your life? I'm not worried about my friends. I'm not worried about my colleagues. I'm not worried about family members. I'm not worried about antagonists. I'm not worried about anybody in my my life that is trying to deter my attention away from what God is doing in my life. I am moving forward. I am doing my best to plow the field because the reality is, is that if I move forward, that if I plow the field that God has before me, once I reach the finish line, I understand that when I reach the finish line, favor is there waiting for me. And so here's the point that I want you to walk home with. Well, that's if you're, you're walking and listening. But if you're already at home, just like keep it at home with you. Uh, yeah. But favor follows the one who finishes. Favor follows the one who finishes. It is as if favor is on your heels and the moment that you get to a space in a place where God says it is finished, favor is just there to hug you and to rehydrate you and to give you more energy to keep on moving on. Think about it. When you finished college, did you feel favored? Think about it. When you actually said, I do, did you feel favored? Think about it. When you actually started the business, did you feel favored? I can almost guarantee you that you did because you finished something and favor follows the one who finished. Oh my goodness. I remember, I remember January 3rd, 2021, when we started the Remedy Church. I can't lie to you. I felt like 
favor was in every space that I went to. I can't tell you how I felt on March 27th, 2021, when we had our first in-person service. I felt like favor followed us as soon as we started our church and our in-person gatherings. I can't tell you how I look back on my wedding day. And once I said I do, I felt like favor followed me everywhere that I, I felt favor when I had my children. I felt favor when I helped people. I felt favor once I finished the finish line because I understood that if I continue to press on after the things that God has set before my life and I didn't pay attention to anybody else. I didn't compare myself to anybody else. I didn't look at anybody else. All I thought to myself was if I finish, God will be proud. And if I finish, favor will follow me continuously all the days of my life. Type favor. Lord, right now, I just pray favor over every person that's watching right now. That those who feel like they are in the rears, I speak favor over their life. Lord, for the person that's watching right now that feels like they don't have any person on their side that is pumping them and pushing them and encouraging them, I speak favor over their life. For the person who feels like they don't have uh, what it takes to go to the next level, favor over their life. Lord, for the person who feels like there are too many gaps in their personality or in their finances or in their emotional stability, I pray that in every gap they think they have, that you put favor in the gap. Lord, right now, I pray that when people see them, they don't even acknowledge them as their name. I want them to say, my name is favor. I'm walking in favor. When I woke up this morning, I washed my face in favor. I brushed my teeth with favor. I am in a place right now where favor is the definition of everything that I have. I don't have it because I'm the best. I don't have it because I'm the smartest. I don't have it because I'm overqualified. I don't have it because I'm better than my neighbor. The only reason that I have it is because I have favor, 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 favor. Ah. And I'm telling you that when you walk in this type of favor, you have to keep your mind stayed on them. Because the worst thing that can happen in your life is for, is for, pay attention, is for you to know you have this favor, but then your mind is somewhere else. God is like, why are you focused over there? Well, you should be focused on me. Many times you give me the glory when you're coming out of a bad season, but you forget to give me glory while you're in the good season. He's like, where is your, where is your mind? Where, where is your, your focus? Here it is. There's a scripture that talks about this. It says that person, in a sense, who can't focus on the favor, such a person is a double-minded. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all that they, they do. Now here's what I want you to know, is that if the Bible is saying that a double-minded person is unstable in all that they do, and if you have some type of instability in your life, then what is that saying about your focus? You do understand that there is one thing to focus on, and that one thing is Christ. And out of that one thing, everything can be right or made whole. Every crooked path can be made straight if we stay focused. Focus, focus, focus. There was an acronym back in the day. I used to love it. I always wanted to get the tattoo. I may still go get it. It says, follow one course until success. Focus. Follow one course until success. Which means that you don't have the privilege of losing focus because when you do that, if you're unstable in all your ways, once you lose focus, then your family becomes unstable. Once you lose focus, your finances become unstable. 
Once you lose focus, your relationship becomes unstable. And I can almost guarantee that you are not watching because you desire to be unstable, but you are watching because you desire to be stable. So if the only thing that you need to do is to focus on him and then stability will be introduced to your life, then I'm telling you that if you're watching and you don't know him, trust and believe that today is the day that you need to switch your focus. And all that we do and all that we are trying to accomplish, we should stay focused on him. Because I want you to know this, a good focus guarantees a good finish. A good focus guarantees a good finish. Ask a person at a gun range right now, how do you hit the target? You have to stay focused. Ask a person with a PhD right now, how did they finish? They had to stay focused because they understood that a good focus guarantees a good finish. Peter was on water, walking on water. The only man that I know that has walked on water other than Jesus. And the Bible says that he messed up his, his focus. And I'm wondering that if he didn't mess up his focus, would water walking just be a thing for him? <laughs> How many things could have been something that we could have naturally been doing if we would have kept our, our focus? You jumped out of the stock market too early. You didn't keep your, your focus. You jumped out of school too early. You didn't keep your, your focus. You got divorced too quick. You didn't keep your focus. The preacher said one thing that offended you and you left the church. You didn't stay focused. People were on your back antagonizing you, wanting you to quit your job, and you actually did it because you didn't stay focused. You were going and you were sitting down getting the therapy that you needed, but you felt like it was just conversation and they weren't really helping you. You didn't stay focus. I'm hoping that every person that's watching right now that you fix your focus. That you fix your focus on Christ more than anything else in the world. And some people may be watching right now saying, man, listen, that sounds cool. But I don't know him to focus on him. I couldn't pick Jesus out of a lineup because I just never had that encounter with him. I never had the relationship with him. I don't, I don't know what's keeping me alive. I don't, I don't know what's allowing breath to flow through my body. I, I don't know why I got a job. I, I don't know why I got a person who loves me. I, I don't know why. Well, let me tell you why. It's, it's because of a man named Jesus and the sacrifice that he made. And in everything that we do, I am telling people that you have to focus on him. So listen, if you're watching right now and you don't know him, then there's a number on the screen. I love talking to our team. They tell me about all the individuals that text and call and email and the things that you need prayer for. It's amazing how God is moving through this medium God is moving virtually, man, I just pray that you trust him, that you love him. Most of all, that you focus on him. Because I believe that when you focus on him, you will notice that he's been focusing on you. Well, listen, man, I pray, I pray, I pray that if you are watching right now that you got something from this message and this thought process around finishing what we start. You don't always wanna be an almost. You wanna finish something. You don't always want to be an almost. You want to finish something. Speaking of finishing, we are almost finished with our vision campaign titled Built to Last. 
Listen, in a couple of weeks, man, we are going to bring the largest, the largest financial seed that we could ever imagine to the sanctuary and those who have been watching all across the country, you are gonna send yours in virtually through our app, through the website and all these other ways that we can give. But this moment right now, this is set aside for those who wanna put something on it. You felt like you got a good word. Maybe you felt like you were almost about to quit. Your knees were about to buckle, but this word really pushed you to another level. Man, give give. If you haven't tithed, then do that first. I believe in the 10th. But if you've done that already and you feel like just throwing a seed into the ground, man, so that you can see a harvest later on, I believe that the Remedy Church is good ground. So, 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 and in a couple of weeks, the first week of November, the first week of November, I want you guys to muster up a sacrificial seed. I know my wife and I, we're doing it. And I just pray that you guys will join us in that fight to make sure that the kingdom continues to stay relevant throughout this world. Well, listen, man, I'm not gonna keep you any longer. I know that there are so many things to be watched right now. I think there are this baseball on, basketball is on, football is on, and I'm still saying go Browns. I know, y'all, I had to leave early this Sunday and uh, something happened. Something happened when I was in the stadium and um, it just, it didn't, it didn't work out. It didn't work out. The devil was busy um, in the first energy stadium, but it's okay. Cause my Browns are still Super Bowl contenders and I mean it in my heart. I don't care what you think, um, but I just want you to know, I'm letting you go, but just know that my wife and I, my family and I, we love you so much, uh, but God, he loves you. He loves you so much more. Peace.